I'm gonna have to play careful with the copyright just to make sure this video lives for a while, but love life. Despite how much I'm into it, I've only made a few videos on it. Um, I was hoping to make some analysis videos on certain characters, but that requires rewatching the whole season and taking notes, which I'm kind of lazy right now, so sorry. You know what doesn't take that much time though? Music. Now, I'm not talking about the actual love life songs, the openings, the ending, the insert songs, which are all really good by the way. No, I'm talking about the actual music in the anime series, aka the background music. Each of the Love Life anime seasons has their own soundtrack attached to it, and as someone who has used all the tracks of these albums for background music in my videos, they're really good and really represent each of the individual groups in amazing ways. Now, I have all the soundtracks on my computer, though that's how I got before they released on the streaming services, but let's talk about the soundtracks used in Love Life. Now, if you're thinking I'm going to be doing a professional music review on this, then uh, no. Sorry. Sorry guys, I'm still a casual music listener, but I did learn something from the Sonic Saturn video. I now know what a motif is. I'm just here to talk about the soundtracks, what I love about them, and how they make me feel. Starting with Muse, they have three albums dedicated to their season, School Idol Project. There's Notes of School Idol Days, which has tracks in the first season, Notes of School Idol Days Glory, which is for the second season, and we have Notes of School Idol Days Curtain Call for the School Idol movie. Using my amazing intelligence, the School Idol Project albums have a motif for the main theme that you'll probably recognize once I play it here. The soundtrack radiates a 2010's chill vibe, which fits when the series was released. The piano is frequently used for silly moments. There's also a frequent use of trumpets, like for track 17. I also personally like track 31 for its vibe slash use of guitar. One thing I like about the soundtrack is that it isn't trying to be something it's not. It's notes of school idle days, so these tracks are meant to represent that. The average day. The shenanigans that can happen. The days that seem to pass faster and faster. And maybe the days that have a lot of importance to us. Even though the others, it was just a Tuesday. Going into Notes of School Idol Days Glory, it maintains the same mood that the previous soundtrack was going for. Track 11 is really emotional, reminds me of Kirby's Epic Yarn actually, which has a soft good vibe to it. We get to hear some trumpets again in track 28. And track 4 in the second CD has those long notes of small notes in between that just gives me goosebumps. It loves the violin so much. There's a motif to the ending theme on track 14 on the second CD. And as we get closer to the end of the album, there's more somber tracks in it, which are definitely there for the moments Muse realizes they're disbanding. Curtain Call, while the same, has a lot more diversity in tracks. It's a lot more exploring and outgoing due to the plot of the movie where they visit AMERICA! Track 7 hits those exact America vibes, I mean that fucking New York song. Every song in Squad of Project feels like it's all live orchestrated, and I'm gonna break my rule of not talking about insert songs, but as time goes by, so good. I made a whole video on it years ago, and at some point in the movie, go watch that. And ending it off of tracks I want to talk about, track 13 is somber. It seems like a distinctive reminder of the end that's incoming despite the adventure we've had so far in the movie.
And that's it for School Auto Project. I think the soundtrack perfectly represents the series, and you know a soundtrack is good when you can listen to a track and immediately associate with a scene that played in the series. I didn't want to include every track in the series even though I want to, just copyright. I do really love the tracks I include in the video though. But now that School Auto Project was over, how was Love Life Sunshine going to be acting as a successor to School Auto Project in more ways than one? Well, looking at Sailing to the Sunshine, the first season's album, it's pretty good. Listening to the soundtrack feels like sparkles. It's like being sprinkled everywhere. There's a lot more ambient noises like birds, and the feel is immediately different. While the school at the project had instruments that were akin to something of an actual school, somewhere in the city with trumpets and guitars and the like, Sunshine has a more local feel, with the ukulele making it way more apparent. And it makes sense, this takes place in Numazu, a pretty remote location in Japan. Also, for this series, I noticed a lot more motifs than the School of the Project soundtrack. It constantly references that sunshine. Do, 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 do. There's something magical about Sunshine's soundtrack, and I might be reaching here, but I like to think it's from Chica's eyes. After witnessing Mew shine, she sees them as magical, and when she's looking at her life, her friends, and her environment, she sees that same magical feeling and it reflects in the soundtrack. Listening to each track, there's so many motifs that I can't pinpoint, but one thing that the music reminded me of was the sound of ocean waves. And I mean that with the sounds and the rhythm, if that makes sense. You know how waves go up and then go down? A lot of tracks give that same feeling. There's a nice local feeling in this track. The soundtrack really sums up Numazu as a place. In the series, I mean. I'm not sure how it feels IRL as far as I know. Sunshine has a lot more somber pieces, and I don't know the exact ratio between happy and sad scenes, but it always felt like Sunshine had a bit more somber moments. Trying to live up to Muse, going into a world that's been oversaturated with idols, and figuring out how to shine among them. Tracks like these perfectly represent that while still retaining that small piece of hope that lies in their hearts. Moving on to Journey to the Sunshine, the second season's album, the main theme's motif changes to be a bit more uplifting, like it's starting to rise, representing Aqua for the newfound motivation. I really love arranged versions of the songs, or different versions of the songs we hear fully later on. Once we reach Sailing to the Rainbow, off topic I love the album titles and how much they match the series, we start with track 1, which starts off with a similar tune we've heard in the series, don't ask me what it is. Also here's my little dopamine trick, I love vocals, acapella stuff, so stuff like this makes me so happy. One of the best parts about the movie is that they typically have the cast going outside of Japan, so we get to hear new styles of music that fit the new location they're in. Uh... 
My absolute favorite track to end off though is Everything Is Here. It's a long ass track, but it really represents Aqua in a, like an, I don't know, uh, audio waveform. What are the terms I should use for this? But being real, it represents the journey of Aqua to me. Okay, let's not get somber and realize Aqua's having their final life. Let's move on to Nijigasaki. Okay, I actually have some words I want to say about Niji that will get reflected when I talk about the soundtrack. Nijigasaki started out as a side project for Love Life, and there's nothing wrong with saying that because I know some people think a side project is lesser than the main series. They experimented a lot with it and did a lot of unique ideas with it, the series. But when the anime was released, I can personally say that it didn't have the same Love Life feel. And again, I don't mean that in a bad way. I, I, li I like uniqueness. But maybe it was the art style, how the series was structured. Something fell off. Then I realized. It was the soundtrack. Remember me mentioning how Love Life soundtracks typically reflected their environment? With School Out of Project, its soundtracks sound like instruments that came from the school, and with Sunshine, it had the local feel of those instruments. Nijigasaki takes place in a big high school. No, no, fuck that, a university. No, fuck that, a city. This is huge. And I'm assuming the budget's high, so they use some of those cooler instruments or something. Just, just listen to the main theme of every group so far. You noticed a small difference, right? I think it's the instruments that are messing with me. Anyway, onto the actual tracks. Track 3 sounds like Nintendo elevator music, it's futuristic and modern, and there we go, modern. The other settings were more grounded in a sense with their locations, while Niji fully embraces the setting of technology and I really like it. I also really like the whistle piano in track 8. While listening to the soundtrack, I didn't notice those long notes, like those violin notes, and it doesn't feel right without it. Maybe I missed it, I don't know. Track 20 shows that modern setting in a way. It makes the soundtrack unique with the instruments they use, and it gets to a point that I can probably tell if a track is specifically from Niji or not. Track 46 is good. I love how peaceful it is. Track 65 is also good. It's weird how it has the same feel of other Love Life tracks, but it feels different in a way. Like the composition is similar, but it's the instruments that give it a whole new identity. Moving on to Season 2, we get a better listen to Niji's main theme, and notice how different it feels. And if you don't hear it, that's completely alright. I'll be giving a better comparison once we reach a certain part of the video. I like track 5, it sounds like Kirby, you may notice the bias here. Track 13 hits those tension notes in a smooth way, seems like something perfect for Lonzu. Track 22 is really good, I used to listen to it when I was like really depressed, sometimes I wish I was swinging on those swings. Track 29 is good too. Niji has a lot of tracks that could totally go into a lo-fi beats video. It's just too bad the copyright's gonna immediately kill them. Track 16 from Disc 2 sounds like something straight out of Mario Galaxy, and I love how Mia's tracks are fully labeled in English. For some reason, for track 26 on the second CD, uh, I associate with Big Cat for some reason. Just fishing. It don't have that. Mm -hmm. 
I hope that after having you listen to a bunch of the tracks from Nijigasaki, you see that feels different from the previous soundtracks. Again, this is not said in a negative light in any way, I love the Niji soundtracks. And while it is Love Life, it's Love Life in a different way than the spin-off theme. And the only reason I say all that with the whole uniqueness and how different it feels is because of Love Life Superstar's soundtrack. When I watched Superstar back when it was airing in 2021, with the awesome team on eBay providing cool translations, it felt good. I watched Nijigasaki beforehand and I enjoyed it just fine, but when I watched Superstar, something just clicked. I don't know if it was the art style, the setting, but something about it just felt like we were back to love life. And it was at its most peak at this moment. This soundtrack immediately made me have goosebumps, straight in my back, and rewind to watch this scene again. This soundtrack, oh god, it's one of my favorites. Dreams of the Superstar is like top 5 love life soundtracks we've had. To be fair, there's not that many, but trust my opinion. Something about these instruments vibe with me so well. Is it the violin? Is it those trumpets that give it a glamorous feel, like every moment is an adventure? Listen to all the main themes we've had so far, and you can tell that Superstar has that sauce. Track 2 feels like such a good transition to the soundtrack. It's that feeling of starting a new journey, a new you, perfectly representing Kanon. Am I reaching? Who knows? Track 6 maintains that motif of the main theme, and I can't explain it, but you can feel it, you know? The vibe. It's back. Whenever I listen to this track, it reminds me of School Other Project and Sunshine, but as it continues, it tells you, hey, we're also our own thing here. Track 12 is the one that plays at the end of episode 1, and everything about it feels so magical. The track continuously hesitates to take that leap, to make that jump, similar to Khan on the same web to pursue this dream of being a school idol or not. Until it stops. And then... I consider this track to be perfect in every way. Not just as music, but how much it impacts the story. The best thing music can do is remind you of something, either your feelings or certain events. And I always, always link this track to what Colin felt, debating whether to do it or not. And the long abundant pause is so realistic that I applied to so many of my own situations of life that I've hesitated, that I've stood still frozen until I find the side to do it. 10 out of 10 track, let's move on. Track 17 is so energetic, literally 90% of the soundtrack feels like the start of an adventure. It feels so reinvigorating, in fact, it makes me want to get up and do something. Okay, bye guys! Okay, me and track 18 have a funny relationship. I've been listening to this track for so long on Spotify. Is it jazz? What is this? Either way, I love it, and I used to have it playing on loop whenever I was editing or doing homework. It's such a soothing track. I used to sleep to track 23. Yeah, I don't have much to say about this track. Superstar's soundtrack is something I'd consider a successor to the previous soundtracks. I always admire Nijigasaki for going to dim directions with its soundtrack, but I didn't realize that something fell off until I watched Superstar. All of Superstar's tracks feel like music you can dance to, with or without someone. Track 15 on the second disc has always hit me in a lot of ways. It gives off so much school out of project and sunshine vibes in a nostalgic way, and it fits with the context considering Ren finally figures out that her mom loved being a school idol and never regretted it. When it shows those old pictures, it's so good it makes you cry. Going into Superstar Season 2, I think I realized what it is. What makes the Love Life soundtrack Love Life? It's the piano the violin, and the long notes. Dash is a really good track. It reminds me of Mario Galaxy and Nintendo games. I think this is why I love the soundtracks. Nintendo. No, I'm not elaborating on this. Listen to the second season's album, season 2 has a lot more interesting creative tracks that make it so amazing to listen to because you don't know what you're gonna get next.
Leila of Proteus is a good one. It sounds like a Splatoon waiting theme cranked up to the max degree. Also, those damn trumpets. Tano Shijao gives off the best Christmas not Christmas song. I really wish I had a musician friend for me right now so they could identify all the instruments used because this feels like a jolly old time. There's something about the second season of Superstar's soundtrack, Twinkle of the Superstar, that feels more grandiose, like it was given the budget of a movie for its soundtrack. Also, Mirai E, when it gets that motif and that stab from a friend, I, oh, I almost lost it. Now, one thing I didn't really mention regarding any of these soundtracks are the composers, and that's kind of important, so, uh, sorry. Yoshiaki Fujisawa is responsible for the Notes of School Idol Days albums. Apparently, he also did some Revue Starlight stuff, but I haven't seen it yet, so all I can say is, like, giraffe. Tatsuya Kato is responsible for all the Sunshine albums, and he has a hefty record of other soundtracks such as Dr. Stone, Trigun, and also Revue Starlight. Huh. Naoki Endo is responsible for the Nijigasaki albums, and he has some history with Idolmaster and some of the Love Life Sayus, which is really cool. Yoshiaki Fujisawa returned from School Idol Project for the Superstar album, which probably explains why it feels so Love Life, because it got the original dude. All these composers are amazing, and I'm surprised that even though all the different series have different composers besides Superstar, they still have a similar vibe to each other that makes it Love Life. There's a lot of love that goes into these, and the fact they don't have many streams is sad because they really should get some attention. They connect with certain Love Life songs that heighten the experience even more given the context. As of the time recording, Superstar Season 3 is premiering right now and that has its own soundtrack, along with the Nijikasaki movie, and those haven't been released yet so unfortunately they're being skipped. Along with that, I'm aware there's some albums for like the musical slash play, maybe the OVA, I'm not too sure, but this is all I could gather so far. It's been nice talking about the soundtracks that I've loved listening to for years now. And one good thing now is that Love Life Company isn't stupid to keep it all physical. They actually made it digitally recently, so you can just feel free to listen to it on Spotify, YouTube Music, iTunes, and the like. Uh, I remember back when Love Life didn't have any of their music on Spotify, so I literally had to use Spotify local files to transfer it over to my iPhone just so I could listen to it on the go. It's just such an interesting time seeing it be so accessible now instead of having to go through the whole loops and holes for YouTube videos to MP3 and such. And that's good, of course. Um, no one should have to suffer for that. These soundtracks definitely need more attention though, so hopefully by watching this video, you take a listen. There's lots of love here, and hey, maybe it can be in your chill playlist or something on Spotify, YouTube Music, whatever you people use for listening to music. Anyway, that's all I got. See you guys later. Um, There wasn't any real reason for me to bring on the fucking Nijigasaki outfit. I, I just really like it. Oh hey, did you know I'm a Love Life fan?